Hey, I'm Greg Sathetis and welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you're new, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. Now we're out here at Marchfield Air Museum once again and behind me is the P-59, America's first jet. Now there were some production problems to where it was either full throttle or no throttle. There was no in between. So you can kind of imagine that would create an issue. Plus the P-51 was kicking some ass in Europe and really didn't need the P-59 to when the P-51 was just doing an amazing job. Now behind me is the SR-71, the Blackbird. Now this is the fastest aircraft ever built, still to this day. And it is an amazing aircraft. You can see it's covering the entire length of the museum. Now the main reason we came back today is for this display. This is the display of a waste gunner. Now it's not actually a B-17, it's not even actually a B-24. It's the side of a fuselage that was cut to make it work. So we're going to make it work because it's 115 outside and it's only about 90 degrees inside. Now I'm going to go get in the high altitude gear and I'm going to tell you what the waste gunners went to as they were taken to the skies at negative 60 degrees at 30,000 feet. Now anything over 10,000 feet, I would have my oxygen mask on. Since we're standing on the ground, I'll go ahead and leave it off, plus you'll be able to hear me. So this is a high altitude gear. Maybe we would have had goggles, but if I had goggles, you wouldn't see me. Uh, oxygen mask would be hard to hear, but everything else. Um, never wore a parachute. Parachute would have been somewhere by my station, so if there was a problem, I would grab it. Because if I had it, it would hindrance the move. Now I got my mittens on, uh, I would have had silk gloves on underneath my hand so if I had to do something with the gun I can take it off because if my bare hand would touch the metal at negative 60 degrees it'd be stuck. So the silk uh, mittens or gloves underneath would have prevented that. Now underneath here I would have had long johns on. I'd have some big thick wool socks. I would have had what's called a bunny suit, which is a blue suit that would actually plug in in the later model aircraft. And it was kind of like an electric blanket, if you will. Um, and then I have my high altitude pants, my jacket, flak jacket, gloves, and I got the crazy big boots on. I got my flak helmet on, uh, my microphone, everything would be in there so I can talk. I'd have a voice mic. This is what if I was a waste gunner, what I would be wearing. I'd be at cruising speed before we drop bombs on the bomb run, 27 to 30,000 feet, anywhere from negative 45 to negative 60 degrees. So you can see why this would be the suit to wear. So the back covers everything. So you can see the entire suit. Now the flak jacket covers most of the private and important organs but and all it is is canvas with metal strips in it it's all sewed together that was a flak jacket back in the in the 40s so now let me get behind the waist gunner i'll go ahead and uh show you what it was like to do there but this is a waist gunner 1940s world war ii now part of the important things you have to remember the B-17, the B-24 were not pressurized. So their open windows were open windows. So not only was it negative 40 to negative 60 degrees, traveling at 200 miles an hour with that cold wind just rushing in, it was cold. But again, everything over 10,000 feet, we required oxygen. So every station had an oxygen bottle and the hose would hook in and this would give me oxygen. So this would have given me all the oxygen. Now, if I had to leave my position to help uh, one of my crew members, we have a walk around bottle. So this would be a small bottle, still connected into my air hose, and that would allow me to get the point to point. Now, if I was without oxygen for less than two minutes, I was dead. So you can see how it is important to have this, and if something happened to our main system, that I actually had a backup. So 
the oxygen was very important. Now, we talked about the bullets. Uh, this would hold 550 to 600 rounds in this box. There were extra boxes and this would be there. So I didn't shoot all the time. In later part of the war, guys very rarely shot their guns. But during the 43, these guns were, were on fire. So now we're going to get in there and fire. So this gun, and again, you have to remember at negative 60 degrees, 30,000 feet, this gun is probably 50 pounds. So it's very heavy. And all this gear, I'm on oxygen. You can imagine how difficult it was for these guys. So let me fire some rounds. So I had the trigger all the way down. Wouldn't have happened in, in real life, only in Hollywood. Now in, in 1940, as a waist gunner, this would have been how I would shoot. It would have been in three or five bursts. If I ran through the whole thing, full trigger, I'd be out of bullets in no time at all. And the average mission was six to eight hours over enemy territory. So if I shot everything in the first minute, what do I do for the rest of the time? Ah, uh, man, it's hot. <laughs> I'm like dying. So I got my flak helmet on. Uh, towards the end of the war, uh, they very rarely saw fighters. The flak was the biggest downfall for all of our bombers, Allied as well as US. So they said that the flak was so thick you can walk on it. Now the dangerous part about flak is you couldn't see it, you couldn't shoot back, you just had to fly through it. And that's what the guys did. They flow through it. Uh, flak jackets protected them, but you can see there's nothing on my legs. Nothing on my arm. Uh, it, it, was, it was crazy. Now, throughout the entire war, German fighters versus flak, the flak took down about 80% of all the bombers versus fighters only taking down 20%. So you can see flak was a huge killer and it did its jobs for the Germans very well. So. This is the waist gun position. This is the high altitude gear. And I'm Greg with B-17 Archaeology. And I gotta get out of this stuff because I'm dying. So Marshfield Air Museum has been great to B-17 Archaeology. Uh, I've met some incredible, amazing veterans here. The volunteers here, the entire staff have been more than helpful sometimes a little playful at times, uh, which is really good. Kind of helps, especially during all this going on. Now, showcasing the jacket right here, this is the patch of the Kangaroo Squadron. This is my friend Colonel Earl Williams' jacket. So Earl was on the first US piloted plane shot down during World War II, which was a B-17 by chance, as he was flying into Pearl on December 7th, 1941. Um, and I'll be telling more about Earl's story uh, and what he's done, but he was wounded on that day because of, there was no medical records, because you can imagine the chaos that was happening in the morning. Complete surprise, nobody knew what was going on, bodies everywhere. Um, there was never a medical record, so he never received his Purple Heart. About eight years ago, I met Earl. Um, we became very good friends, and he told me the story. So I've been working if you call it working, I've been arguing, I've been fighting, I've been uh, squeaky wheel gets the grease with the Air Force, with the Board of Purple Heart, with the Order of the Purple Heart, everything. And on Earl's 101st birthday, we received word that he's being recommended for the Purple Heart. Unfortunately, Earl passed away um, earlier this year, a couple months ago. Uh, my goal was to give it to him and have him be awarded the Purple Heart and not a posthumous medal. Bottom line, he knew that he was recommended. Long time fighting for it. And Earl, it was an honor to be able to do this for you. So I wanted to point out Earl's jacket. They have a great display of jackets. So if you want to take a little tour of their exhi uh, exhibition hall here, it's incredible. But this is Earl's jacket.
So it's not me, I'm actually right here. Um, but this is, would have been a different flak jacket, actually has a lower guard, which I did not have when we were doing the footing. Um, he's got a walk around tank, he's got his parachute strapped on, uh, the harness underneath, but not the actual parachute. Um, but this is what, I'm sure this is what I looked like when we were doing it. So I'm back in my regular clothes. I had to get out of the high altitude gear. I was dying. Uh, crazy hot, 114 outside. I'm in this gear that's meant to be for negative 60. I had to get back in my regular clothes so that I can uh, kind of tell you my experience. So a couple facts about the 50 caliber. The ammo chute was 27 feet long or nine yards. So the saying that everybody's heard is I gave it the whole nine yards, which meant they shot every bullet and they were out of bullets. A World War II phrase originally was with the P-51, but the ammo shoots were, were about the same, give or take a little bit. And the other part about it, in Hollywood, they sit there in every war movie, they just fire and fire and fire and hold down that trigger. If I was to do that, I'd run through all 600 to 700 bullets in less than a minute. So it was never done at full trigger, it was always done in burst. So a little bit of facts on that. I had a great time again. Uh, we're going to be doing all the positions. So thank you for watching. And if you're new, please like us, subscribe, and remember B17 Archaeology, it's a cool place to be.